Before we jump into the update for the 1.3 software, Akai Pro would like to thank all of the MPC users for your constant contributions and feedback. As you know, the program is constantly evolving and being refined. The input that we receive from users is extremely important. And as you'll notice, the 1.3 update will show you that Akai has been listening. Please make sure to continue to share your comments and suggestions on Facebook, Twitter, and AkaiProMPC.com. As you know, the Akai MPC Renaissance and Studio both share the same software. So this 1.3 update is universal for both. With the exception of the new vintage mode, SP1200 Ring is only available on the Akai Renaissance. So let's dive right in. One of the most significant improvements in 1.3 is the brand new plugin and mixer architecture. Let me demonstrate this. I'll load up the WUB on channel one. So for our first example, I'll load up our plugin directly from the hardware. I go over to my type, I select plugin, I come down, I'll select the WUB. And as I go to my track mixer, you can see that we have a better and completely new organized mixer page. We'll see that we have one channel that appears for the plugin, and that's our plugin channel. And we also have one that is a MIDI channel. We can now direct as many MIDI channels as we want to the plugin channel. Now, if I go back to my main page and add a second track, we now see that we have two MIDI channels going to the same plugin. I can then play from track two or track one. As we've shown you, you can route as many MIDI tracks as you want to any plugin. If I want another instance of the same plugin, I would simply go to the next track, which is three. I would add a new plugin and select the WUB. Now I can select different patches from a second WUB. Shows here that I can show and hide my master, which is my returns and my sends. I can show unused tracks or hide the unused tracks, or I can show my plugins or hide my plugins. Now let's move on to track four. If I select underneath of track, you'll see that I have an unused channel. And you may wonder where the rest of my channels are. If you come all the way to the bottom, Akai has conveniently placed them in a sidebar. If I go here, I'll select unused, and that is my channel four. For this example, I'd like to load the bank. Now that I've selected the bank, let's go to back to our track mix. As you can see, we've added a new MIDI channel and we've also added a new plugin channel. Now if I go to my program edit, I can see that there's a great new graphical user interface for all Akai programs. This can be done for third-party programs as well. And our more adventurous users can make their own graphical user interface using XML. Now I'd like to talk about one of my favorite features of 1.3, the ability to use multi-channel plugins. As we said before, with our new mixer structure, we get a plugin channel and we also get MIDI channels that we can route as many of those as we want to our plugin channel. If you look now, I've loaded up the Stylus Remix and as you can see on track one, I have MIDI information as well as my MIDI channel set to channel one. If I go to track two, you'll see that I have new information and also that my MIDI channel is set to channel two. Again, I can repeat this for track three and for track four. If I press play and I go to my track mix, I can now affect the volume of each individual track. And another key new feature is that if I go back to the top of my mixer page, and I adjust to plugin, I can now affect the volume of that particular plugin. 
Now with our new architecture, you may be asking yourself, how will this affect all of my previous sessions before 1.3? The great thing is that when you load all of your old sessions, they will appear exactly as they were. For instance, if you had eight instances of the bank, you will load up your program and it will be eight instances of the bank. It will be up to you to take advantage of this great new architecture and save yourself space and processing power by assigning those to one plugin. For this next section, I want to show you some of the new features in the 1.3 update for editing and sampling. I'm lucky enough to have our gracious host, Mr. Jerry Wonder. What up, man? We appreciate you, man. Man, anytime. Thank you for yeah, having man. us, man. Anytime. Um, what I wanted to do here was just have you play the bass over a drum program so I can show them some of the new editing features. The uh, bass lines. <laughs> Let's see. I think that's probably a good groove. That's perfect. We could play, we could play around with it, right? Appreciate that. <laughs> now that we've finished that, I'd like to show you some of the great new editing and recording features. First of all, we now have the ability to record at 16 or 24 bit. If I go into my preferences and I select other, I can change the sample bit depth from 24 to 16. I'll leave it at 24. Now I can edit the bass line. If I go into my sample edit mode, we have a great new feature by holding down the shift and the arrow keys that I can zoom from the hardware, in or out. Now when I chop, I can zoom in, and this will allow me to use another one of our great new features, which is the ability to write our own chop points just by double clicking. I can then erase that point by double clicking again. Now that we're done editing, I'd like to show you some of the new features for arranging samples inside of your programs. Again, we can grab a sample and drag it to our sample list. We can also drag that sample to a pad. We now have the ability to drag samples directly to the lanes as well. As you can see, that new sample is on pad A10. Again, I can drag whole folders. Finally, I can select an entire folder, drag it directly to a pad, and it will load all the samples contained in that folder from that pad on. Which also lets me demonstrate what I think is one of the key features of the 1.3 update. We now have the ability to delete unused samples. If I go to my edit, all the way down at the bottom, delete unused samples, will allow me to remove whatever samples inside of my session are not being used. So let's take a second and make a quick edit and put this baseline with our already constructed beat. Now I can edit, discard my unused. I'll take off the tail end and do the same thing. Edit, discard my unused. I can now place that sample on a pad and add it to my beat. Now that I've done that, I can apply all of my vintage modes. Of course, I have my MPC 3000, my MPC 60, and my SP 1200. But by popular demand, Akai has added a new ring mode from the SP 1200. If you remember, you could pull the plug halfway out and that would bypass the filter, giving us this incredible sound. So as I move from SP 1200, you'll hear the difference in the ring mode. In addition to all of our new editing features, Akai has added some great options to make import and export even more simple. Again, if I go here to File and go to Export, 
I can now export as a project archive, which will allow me to save my whole project as a zip file on my desktop, making it simple to go in between computer systems. I can also now export as a mix down, which will allow me when I select my separate tracks to get all of my submixes and my plugin channels. In addition to these features, Akai has added greater support for our legacy files. All of our APS and all files from the 3000 and the 2000 are now added with greater support. This is Young Guru, and thank you for watching the MPC University 1.3 update. Again, you should always check AkaiProMPC.com for all the latest updates, and we'd also like to hear your suggestions.